Podcast. We're talking episode number 248 out of Boxo Studio in the great city of Hamilton, Ontario. It is yet another example, another episode, another night of great music on Barber's Shop Podcast. And uh, tonight, Gary Greenland is hitting it solo. If I'm sounding a bit thin on the mic, it's we had a gremlin in there who was scratching and growling, so... I'm going to have to give it like old school. Project every word enunciated with care and passion. Like the city of Hamilton itself. Talk about care and passion. This is the industrial heartland, the golden horseshoe, as it were. And we draw from all over the headwaters of great original music, all kinds of music, all kinds of people. And tonight is no different. Uh, Ryan Cannon is in Jamaica. You know, whatever that means. He's in Jamaica having the time of his life. He could be watching right now. And if Ryan Cannon is watching from Jamaica, I hope you're having a great time in Jamaica because we had Jamaican-like weather uh, tonight. Are you got a mic, Gary? Are you hitting the mic? He's looking at he's, he's scrambling around. Look at I he's have got, a mic. And he's got the right thing. The, so do you feel, are you underwhelmed, overwhelmed, or just perfectly whelmed tonight? Uh... All of the above. All of the above. Gary, uh, you know, you did the Tommy Swick yes. uh, episode uh, not too long ago, so we know, you know, he, he can handle a uh, one-man show. The two, three, five, seven, nine-man shows with the with the acrobats and whatnot. We need two guys for that, but we can Definitely. handle it tonight. For sure. And uh, we're going to do it like we do it every week. Uh, looking to wrap up a, a great five years at the end of November. Uh, stay tuned. Still not sure exactly what we're going to do. It is more hit than miss, but it's still hit and miss here at Barbershop Podcast. But you can't miss with great, alive, original music. Okay? We've got it in every town, hamlet, and village in this province, in this country. And across the world, you're going to find musicians who are um, professing their uh, expertise, desire, passion uh, all for their uh, craft, which is music, the m- culmination of all of the arts. All of the senses come together with music. And to have a storyteller and a sculptor and a painter and a soothsayer all wrapped up into one, that's what you get with live music. Well, country music, as you know here, is one of the great uh, canvases for expression, for writers and for storytellers, country music for the longest time has been front and center. And Canada and Hamilton, this part of Ontario, has seen so many great country artists coming along the great Toronto, Hamilton and Buffalo Railway, the crossroads for anyone going to Toronto, Montreal, Windsor, they crossed through Hamilton, the crossroads of music, and no exception tonight. We've got a fella coming in from north east of Cowtown, a land that we were reminiscing about used to be literally Cowtown, where the farmers came to the market, uh, the great expanses of uh, arable land producing crops for this province. It's a different world now. We borrow our stuff from all corners of South America. They're put on trucks, trains, and boats brought up here. We don't have the same thing that we used to have, but we what we do have is the music. The music remains. We may have forgot where we came from as far as the crops that come from the ground maybe only a few of us are privy to how beautiful home cooking is with things you grew yourself but music we've got that continues to be created continues to be crafted 
continues to be exported, explored, and showcased. And we're doing our little bit here at Barbershop Podcast. Nothing changes. And this week is no different. We have our good friend, Blaine Burney, coming on the show. And he is an individual. He's unique. He has a story to tell. He has a technique. He has a style. And he's here on Barbershop Podcast. Blaine, thanks for coming in. How are you doing, brother? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me. I always ask people when they come in here about the early days of music. You know, it's a lot of times the mom loved music, dad hated music, or you had an older brother or sister had a killer record collection, or there was a cousin or you went to a wedding where there was a live band and it just, you know, spun your head around. What was your earliest kind of connection with music? My earliest connection with music was definitely from my mother. Uh, she was a piano player. Um, no theory, just sat down, played by ear. She loved to play. She loved to sing. And she got me into guitar lessons at a very early age. I was about eight years old, so that was a few years ago. And uh, back then, we were living in Scarborough uh, when I was eight. And a lot of my friends and stuff had records and we had records and we got into everything from the Dave Clark Five to the Beatles to the Stones. Um, and then later on, of course, you know, the Led Zeppelins and all those things. And it just really moved me. And that was kind of my influences, Bob Dylan. And then later on, uh, those influences changed some. Yeah. yeah. Were you someone who was uh, someone who loved the written word early on, or was it just the music that brought you in at first? I'm glad you asked that. It was really the music. Um, still today, I have problems when I'm hearing a new song, picking out the lyrics. Yeah. If I read the lyrics, I can really get into it, but just listening to the lyrics, I hear the music first. And I think that's because my mother sat me down in front of that old phonograph and she'd put a record on and she'd say, okay, I want you to listen just to the bass guitar. Yeah. I want you to listen to just the guitar part. Thank goodness for your mother. <laughs> That's true. And uh, yeah. that attention, right? Yeah. And do you yeah. find it happens naturally now where you just dissect the music yeah, as it comes to now you? Now I have to uh, really turn that all off to hear the lyrics. Yeah. And then sometimes that's hard, yeah. So um, tell me about your direction and how it kind of takes you to where you are today. Did you go through the process of being in a number of bands with your friends and playing all the cover tunes and whatnot? Eventually, as you aged, you realized uh, my sensibilities have changed, my uh, the demographic of people who come out to the places I come out to have changed. Like, holy cow, this, like for me, music, country music was never cool. I mean, it really wasn't. It was like we were too busy fighting disco at the time. But then once disco was defeated, you're looking around as a rocker for another opponent and it's country music. But there wasn't a lot of country music people because when you're 18 or 19 in uh, southern Ontario, there's not a lot of country music fans, is there? There wasn't then for us, for sure. Um, so, yeah, we we I was in a high school band, which... Uh, it's funny because I moved to Stouffville uh, just to start grade nine high school from, from the city. And moving up from the city, I had long hair. And I moved into a farmer's town, and everybody had brush cuts. And I was the real weirdo until they found out, well, I played guitar. And Not, then you weren't too half bad. And then I wasn't too half bad, yeah. <laughs> right. Let's give an example. Let's kick off with some live music tonight. What are you going to do for us first? What's, uh, what's the first song you're going to play for us? First song I'd like to play for you is a song called Goodbye. And, of course, we all know what, uh, the passing of Gord Downey and how sad that was and how it's really affected um, a lot of musicians that I know today just from on Facebook and stuff. And, I don't think it's, it's been on the news all day and they've been playing Gord Downey all day. I don't do any tragically hip songs. It's just not my genre. It might have been back when, if I was younger, because yeah. we, we did all those stuff. But So I'd like to play a song uh, just to kind of say goodbye to Gord and uh, 
This song's called Goodbye. All right, you're going to hear it right here, right now. Blaine Burney on BarbershopPodcast.com. So yeah, um, you're gonna have to stomp your feet a little less. The mics are super hot. It still sounded super good. It kind of came in there. 
but my mic's super quiet. Yours is super hot. Okay. And uh, we are going to get through because music. You got to tell me about like live music because we're you're not in the major crossroads of where there's a club, a music club, and a place to go. You've got to kind of seek out. Um, the, so where do you play? Like tell tell the people um, um, what you've carved out for yourself in the way of uh, where's who are my people? Sure. Uh, as, as far as venues that we play? Yeah. Or yeah, and the people I play with? Yeah. Um, sure. I play with a, a great guitarist, uh, a good friend of mine, Mark Thackway, who's uh, amazing. And um, we do a lot of duo work, and we play everywhere in Toronto, the Relish, the Hole in the Wall, um, the Cloak and Dagger. Uh, we've even, even had some residencies where we were playing there weekly. Um we also play not just in Toronto, but in every Markham, Newmarket, Stouffville. I have a, a regular gig at once every four weeks yeah. uh, at, a, at a pub in Stouffville too. So, yeah. what's the what's the one thing that people want? They want uh, when they come out to listen to music. What have you found? Have you been surprised uh, sometimes where it's like, wow, I didn't think they would like that song, or like, or it is there... really varies. Yeah. Um, like. Some people want to hear the hits, and that's not really us. <laughs> uh, get your own hit deep inside. Um, but I mean, uh, Mark's a, a big, is a huge, and always has been a Grateful Dead uh, fan, and um, and he actually does a lot of Grateful Dead stuff, and and sometimes we play that, and people just go crazy. I'm a huge Steve Earle fan. And sometimes I'll do a Steve Earle song, and people go, "Yeah, more Steve Earle," and that just surprises yep. me. Yeah, and you got to know a lot of different songs and a lot of different genres yeah, sure. depending on where. And that is, as a troubadour, or as someone who is a storyteller, you know, you are a fan of the storytellers, right? Exactly. Yeah. And you, you always have just good songs in your in John your quiver. Prine, John Prine, yep. one of the best storytellers yep. around. Um, yep. Bob Dylan, of course. Um, um, and I've heard some, you know, amazing stories even recently about John Prime when I was down in Nashville. As you know, I just got back and um, he did an interview with uh, Sturgill Simpson and the interview just blew me away. It was all about songwriting, so it was extremely interesting. And uh, one of John Prime's famous songs is Hello In There. And the, guy, the interviewer asked him, how did you write that song and how did you come up with the name Hello In There? He says, well, he was listening to John Lennon, and it, the song he was listening to of Lennon's had a huge amount of reverb on it. It was just echoing, echoing. So he says, so he was just sitting there, John Prine was going, hello, <laughs> hello, hello in there, and he came up with the song, yeah. which was one of his biggest hits. And uh, Sturgill Simpson says, <laughs> I've been making this way too difficult. <laughs> yeah, it's true. As a songwriter. <laughs> true. It's uh, to yeah. just, uh, and you ever, I mean, I'm just speaking for personal because I just picked up a couple of keyboards and I'm having so much fun just laying my hands on it and things coming out that I didn't expect, right? Uh, oh. Birth for something that's going to be something. The 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 germ of a song that's going to grow into something. Sure, it's a process that's as frustrating as it could be. Is really wonderful, isn't it? Yeah. All right, we're going to get you to do another live one for us. What's the next one you got in the line? Well, I want to do this one which we do with the Bluegrass Band. So it's there's, in our in our five piece we have uh, Mark Thackway on guitar, Gene Guthrow on doghouse bass, Doug Cornish on banjo, and Jan Reimers on mandolin. And we have a lot of fun when we, we get up and play some bluegrass and folk grass, we call it. This is kind of a crossover between folk and bluegrass because it's a Bob Dylan song. Wonderful. But I'm going to do it a little bluegrassy for What's you. it called? It's called Don't Think Twice. Don't Think Twice. This is Blaine Burney. This is barbershoppodcast.com.
Barbershop Podcast, you know it, good time, feel good music, that's what we do here, it's what Blaine does, and he travels far and wide, support your local music scene, get in there, bring some people, if you already do, then bring your neighbor, bring your relative, go, what are you going to do on Wednesday, I'm going to go to a movie, no you're not, take them out to something fun, something good, and uh, make a convert, we're all good with that. Um, I'm going to give a shout out to H&G Entertainment Services. If you are an entertainer, if you're in the entertainment business, if what you do is to entertain people one way or another, chances are as great as you are at the fit and finish of that end of the business, maybe not so much at the other end, the bricks and stones, the mortar, uh, as it were. Uh, That's where H&G Entertainment Services come in. Now, listen to me. You know, you got pretty busy life going on. And you need an extra set of hands. H and G Entertainer Services will help. They're not agents. They're not secret agents. They're not any kind of agent, but they're there to help. They got a lot of knowledge and contacts in the business. Uh, if you've got a busy lifestyle, they will help ease it up. Assist with contracting uh, venues, uh, getting hold of the people you need to get a hold of, scheduling, social media. And even taxes and bookkeeping, all of that kind of stuff. Uh, for a small monthly fee, Heather and Gary will uh, do your business work so you can do the entertainment work. You know, why muddy up that one side of your brain that you don't want to have to deal with? Anyway, right there, there's the number, there's the email. Call or email to get the information you want. They take care of our stuff, and no one has arrested us yet. No one has knocked on my door and said that those numbers are incorrect. So I can only vouch and say good things for those people what do you mean by those people it's a tough it's a tough gig out there right it's a tough world out there getting there doing music there's not too many people in our we're the same age kind of come from the same era who uh, can still do it do it full time right all of us have to really be creative about how to make this work nowadays it's don't tough we? to make a living at it it really yeah. is um and uh the business has changed you know years ago we used to Go out and play a gig with your band, and believe it or not, get paid twelve or four, yeah. twelve or fourteen hundred dollars for it, right? Yeah, and even when it was a shitty gig, it was five hundred bucks. Exactly. Now you know everybody's 
struggling to make a hundred bucks for a night per musician, yeah. And, yeah. and it's very, very hard to do. What they're doing in, in Nashville, though, is kind of moving up this way, and I think it's I think it's good. Um, you go to any club on the Strip in Nashville, the, the busy one, you know, where the Roberts and the Tootsies and all those guys are. There's some fantastic musicians playing there, and they play for tips yep. in the bars. And they they make people fall in love with them and yep. make their hay that way. They do, and they they pass that tip jar, and they're pretty adamant about it. And they explain to them, you know. There's no cover charge there. Uh, the bar is yeah. not paying them. Yeah. Um, this is how we make our living. <coughs> if you like it, if you if, like, I, if you think I'm worth a beer, give me seven dollars. Yeah, exactly. You know, um, a really big beer. We like folding money. You know, is what they say. Yeah. And uh, and I've noticed that in Toronto, it's that's coming more and more. Like you're gonna that. have to do that. And the whole salesmanship, uh, as I said before, bars, venues had. Um, you know, publicists, bands, and agents, they well kind of crossed over and created buzz. There's no one creating buzz now. You That's have right. to create your own buzz you and you have to get good at it and be unabashed in supporting yourself and standing yep. up for yourself and saying, God damn it, give me your money. <laughs> and as far as venues, I, I actually walk into a lot of places and just to, you know, ask to speak to them and say, hey, you know. I got a duo, a trio, and a five-piece band. If you're looking for live music, we'd yeah. love to come play here. And probably quite a few of them, you're probably the first person to come in and ask them about live music, Yeah, because right? everybody, everybody else is phoning them, emailing them. Yep. You know, and or stuff, assuming so. that just because it's a sports bar that they may not want music. Yeah. When you never know. It's like, yep. you know what? We would love that on a one-night week. Yeah. Do it. Like, yeah. get creative. Get out there working. Boston. Absolutely. Love it. All right, we're going to play a video of yours. Cool. This is the girl from North Country. Is this our North Country? Is it any particular North Country? Is this a cover song? This is a, a Johnny Cash, Bob Dylan song that uh, Bob Dylan did a duo with him on the Johnny Cash show when he used to have the Johnny Cash show. And I heard this song and absolutely loved it. And uh, I just learned it in the last oh, year or two because I love the song so much. And I went out to this place and uh, played it and this and they got videoed and uh, the crowd just loved it so it's cool a little piece of history something falls out of the sky someone makes something of it <laughs> people respond to it people videotape it gets put on a podcast called barbershoppodcast.com <laughs> Thank you. 
of a mind. Girl from the North Country. You got uh, our pal Blaine Bernie in there. And Mark. Mark was trying to get his own spot on the show. I was like, no, no, forget that, Mark. You know, until you get a bunch of dancing girls with sequin gowns. That's what we like here. Barbershop Podcast. I've had an incredible spate of people here. 248 episodes. You get a lot of people in here, there, everywhere. And meeting a lot of people and having a different perspective on life i mean that's something that music really helps do it does you know because you can't you can't really fake it and be a dick in the music business can you right you found out pretty quick that way you are you are and you have to and if you're if you're lacking in one area chances are you make up for it in another area and that's music it kind of requires that that happens that matrix is uh, shorter and sharper same one as we all struggle through in our life just uh in the music business it's a bit of an amplified colorized version of everyday regular life and it's great because there's a soundtrack to it and we remember songs that helps us remember where we were what we were thinking what we were feeling who we were dating what we were eating what we were driving I love that that date stamp that music has on us. Let's do that again. What's uh, what's the next live one you're going to do for us, Blake? I'm going to do you uh, a tune by Little Feet. Oh, we love our Little Feet around here. What's this one called? <laughs> it's called Willin'. Willin', right here. We're going to send this out to our long-time friend and departed uh, friend, Alex McDonald, uh, right here. Blaine Bernie, barbershoppodcast.com. Give me 
that moves you they are the songs of our life it is amazing how music is able to track us step by step across the planes of our existence the highs and the lows so much of who we are and what we are why we are given to the musical gods as they were some of us gifted Some of us, maybe not. But all of us bestowed with the appreciation for what music can do for us. All of us have felt the hair rise, the goosebumps, the emotional response to music. You know it's real. It's not something that is effervescent in the air. It's not something that can be dismissed, forgotten. It is real, it is music, and it is a big part of your life, my life. Make it a daily regimen, you know? Not just when you get up and you do your push-ups and you do your sit-ups. You know, Rocky didn't just run around. He was like, you know, you, that, 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 that. I'll tell you, every, every army marches to a song, every cause has an anthem. It's not by mistake. It's for a reason. I've had a great time. I'm so glad you came into the studio tonight. And oh, shared a bit of the story. Thank you for we're having gonna, me. We're going to squeeze one more song out of you. Uh, what are you going to do for us? What is your final offering here at Barbershop Podcast tonight? And tell us why you picked it. Uh, the reason I picked this song is uh, my father's 92 years old. And uh, I am his caregiver. He's still doing extremely well. Um, looking after himself a lot, but he needs to have somebody there, so I've been doing that for the last few years. And uh, John, this is a song John Prine wrote, I was telling you about earlier, that he got out of the John Lennon reverb thing, Hello In There. So this is Hello In There by John Prine. I'd like to play it for you. Oh, you know what? I needed to hear this right now. I love my dad. We should all love our dads. They're good men. And John Prine, you don't get any better than that. Blaine Bernie, Barbershop Podcast dot com.
me and Loretta, we don't talk much more. She sits and stares through the back door screen. Seems like old news just repeats itself. Someday I'll go call up Rudy. We work together at the factory. What'll I say if he asks what's new? Nothing much with you. Nothing much to do. You know that old trees just grow strong. If you're walking down the street sometime Spot some hollowed ancient eyes Please don't just walk by and stare As if you didn't care Just allow yourself. Close your eyes. Float away. It's there. It's in your record collection. And all you lucky bastards have it free on the interweb. In our day, we had to go out and scrounge and cut lawns and pick up garbage and buy 45s and LPs and cassettes, didn't we? And pop bottles. And pop bottles. Yeah. Yeah. Pop shop pop bottles. Any kind of pop bottle. But I'm telling you. Music has value. Get yourself physical copies. Don't be settling with just computer files. Get CDs. Get records. Collections. You know, you can go discover so many great artists. All you young whippersnappers. I'll tell you, Blaine, had a great time tonight. Enjoyed the heck out of it. Thanks for coming in. I really enjoyed it. Thank you for having me. Oh, it's fun every week. In and out. I tell you, Barbershop Podcast is crazy. Every week. I don't even know who's going to be on next week. We had a late cancellation. It'll be a surprise. But you know it's going to be good because it's barbershoppodcast.com. For Gary Greenland, I'm Kevin Barber. Have a good time. Good night. Great life. Take the